One of our vice patrons is the forces commander, but this week the forces commander is handing over to the new forces commander, um, Major General Susan Coyle. And as such, he has apologised, but basically sent this presentation. And before asking our other patron, uh, General Tomei, if he could give us his presentation, I'm just going to ask if we could review the brief uh, video that Major General Pearce has made for us. To the President of Roosie, New South Wales, Mr Michael Ho, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, can I begin by thanking and congratulating Roosie, New South Wales for the work that you do to contribute to public debate on defence and security issues. And that's clearly to protect and promote Australia's national interests through our contribution to a free and open Indo-Pacific. Your thinking and advocacy has the potential to be the rising tide that lifts all boats. I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia, including the Gadigal here in Sydney. I recognise their continuing connection to traditional lands and waters and pay my respects to their elders, both past and present. I also pay my respects to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander men and women who have contributed to the defence of Australia in times of peace and war. I know your topic of conversation today is the AUKUS agreement. Regrettably, I'm not in a position to speak about operational or tactical matters related to AUKUS, but I am able to make some general comments about deterrence and how your army is working with allies and partners in the region. It will very much be an applied focus from a soldier's perspective as part of an integrated team. By any measure, I think it's true to say the Indo-Pacific region is much less certain more complex and frankly more dangerous than it has been during our lifetime, well, for most of us anyway. Uh, my proposition is that we are stronger together and our nation needs more options, not less. While the military exists to defend sovereign territory and national interests, the measuring stick of success for a military is no war. I say again, no war. How do we do that? Well. It's through our day-to-day -day campaigning and through fielding and sustaining a joint force that is relevant and credible in all five warfighting domains, land, air, sea, space and cyber. There's prevailing commentary today that speaks with undue precision and certainty about the next war. It generally comes from a perspective that either dismisses or ignores the very violent, very human and very unpredictable nature of war. It confuses targeting and tactics for operational art and strategy and describes an asymmetric response in a single modality of warfare. It supposes will can be imposed and can be resisted at ever increasing distance and without having to close with an adversary. It focuses on the outcome of the first battle or battles rather than the enduring war itself and imagines the next war will be short, decisive and clean. Unfortunately, history, including Australia's history, doesn't support this hypothesis. Even the strategic shock reverberating from the latest war in the Ukraine, a war that began in 2014, has shown deterrence can fail and that assumptions can be wrong. Fog, friction, chance and individual agency mean that war will always unfold in ways that were never expected or envisaged. Above all, the war in Ukraine is a stark reminder of what's at stake. It highlights at once the fragility and the value of a rules-based order that has characterised the last eight decades of relative peace and stability in our region and the re-emerging willingness of some state actors to use military force to impose their will. We ignore these lessons from history at our peril. To quote H.R. McMaster, we have a perfect record of predicting future wars. That record is 0%. The unpredictability of war demands an ADF that is relevant and credible in all domains and integrated as a system of systems that has the best probability of mission success, whether deterring war or prevailing in its contest. Both Brigadier Ian Langford and I have spoken previously of Army's modernisation plans to be more protected, connected, lethal and enabled as part of the joint force. Our quest for an integrated force is built on the assumption that we are more than the sum of our constituent parts, but equally each of the parts must be viable in the first instance. It's also true that as a values-based liberal democracy, we will fight alongside our allies and partners to help ensure peace and stability. 
Army has been doing this for many decades and established long-standing relationships. We've found across the Indo-Pacific nations, armies are often the most trusted in institutions. They are the glue that binds the regional security architecture together by partnering with these armies in exercises, education opportunities and leader conferences, we better understand the security demands of our region and the way that you can only get from persistent presence that is provided by boots on the ground. The next year alone, your army has more than 150 discrete training exercises to enhance our collective warfighting capability, up to and including high-end joint warfighting scenarios. More than 200 soldiers and officers from regional armies will attend education and training courses here in Australia. And of course, there's several major construction projects that will continue to deliver essential infrastructure in our region, injecting more than 75% of the total cost into local economies by using local materials, skilled and unskilled labour. But through education, training and enhancing skills, health and education in local communities, our army is making a difference in our region and connecting with people. So in closing, the challenges we face today are deeply significant. I would offer we need an ADF to be an integrated force, relevant and credible in all domains, and that relationships are critical. In fact, they've always been critical. We must continue to grow together with our allies and partners in this age of new technology and threats. The future fight will be multi-directional, multi-dimensional and multi-domain. If we plan to fight the next war in one domain, we may not like the outcome. But if we're prepared to fight across all domains with our allies and partners as a joint and combined team and demonstrate our ability to make the problem more complex and harder every day, there's no adversary on the planet that can match this team. Thank you. Well, I'm sure I speak on behalf of all of us too, through you, Adam. If you would please thank uh, Major General Pearce for that thoughtful and wide-ranging address and wish him all the best in his next uh, posting. And we thank you very much for representing him here today.